Hello and welcome to Commodore 128 Assembly Language Programming. Um, I'm Aaron, your programmer and host. So we're going to continue on with the SHA hash calculator here today. Um, I've taken a couple extra days to get to it here because I was kicking around um, different ideas. I was basically stuck on how to do this last thing that I ran up against and um, kept kicking around ideas how to do it and didn't really like any of them. The way that I did it last time works, but I just I don't like it at all. It seems like massive overkill for what we're trying to do. Um, basically, we get to this point right here, and we need to be able to copy a 4-byte value from a moving memory location to a 0-page location so that we can run our function on it. And... I was I got to the point where I decided okay we'll do pointer arithmetic where we add a, an index to a pointer put the pointer in another zero page location and then use that pointer to copy the thing and I thought that seems like a lot of extra stuff going on just to copy four bytes so I was trying to come up with a different way to do it and I would I'd come up with something I'd think I had it and I'd, I'd come back to this and look at it and realize no that's not going to work but I think I finally, I think I finally have it here, so we can finally move on, um, or, or we'll see. I guess is the, the thing to say. The um, here's the thing. Like I said, um, I went over, I went over this some last time, but um, let's see, where did I put that? Remember what? what file I put this in. Um, shoot. I thought I was prepared. Okay, here it is. When we get to this thing where we prepare the message schedule, first we copy the first 60, or we copy the next block of 64 bytes of the message into the message schedule and then we've got to process on top of that to get the next, to get the rest of the 256 byte chunk. Um, and so we do this thing right here, which, if you think of X as your index into that, into that block, then you're doing this to do the, to do the new value at message schedule indexed by X, which X starts out at 64, you've got to run function 4, F4 on the value that's two words before that, which is eight bytes before that, and then you've also got to run function F3 on the value that's 15 words before that one, and you've also got to copy these other two values. And so you've got these shifting locations that are going to change as X changes. And so the idea, I, the thing I did last time is I said, okay, we'll have a pointer to each of these locations WWP minus 8, WWP minus 56, we'll have a pointer to each of these locations, and then we'll have to add X to each of those locations because you can you can, you can only index so many ways at once, you can only index one way at a time, and um, so that's where I ended up. And so what I ended up doing down here was I ended up saying, okay, we'll take the first pointer, put it in copy source, add the index to it, and then we're ready to jump to our, you know, to jump to F4, which then actually does the copying from the location pointed to by copy source. And like I said, that just seems like a lot of extra trouble going on every time you want to copy something. So I think I came up with a better solution. Um, looking at this. Or, well, let's see. So, last time what I did was I came up, or I had come up with this, where I said, okay, basically I was, I was trying to be too, I was trying to make my routines too flexible. I was saying, okay, let's have another routine that copies, but instead of copying from any location, this will be specifically to copy from these sliding locations. And that's when I came up with F copy WW. But you still have to be passing, the, you kind of, Basically, that didn't work because it wasn't, it was flexible, but it wasn't flexible enough because things are still moving too much. So then I got to thinking, 
what if I have an F copy WW for each of those four locations? Because each one by itself is simple. Each one by itself is simply, like I say, let me find the right file here. Like this first one here, F, what F, that F4 works on, it's simple. It's always going to be the, the spot eight bytes back from the beginning of the message schedule, which is at C1, C100. So it's always going to be um, BF8 indexed by X. And the second one is going to be BC8 indexed by X, and so on. So if I just have four of these F copy WW routines, one for each of those locations, then they become very simple. And it took me a long time to think of that because I, I tend to think in terms of shrinking the code because of the fact that we're limited in how many bytes we have. But really with 128K, we're not really that limited that we need to you know, be that particular sometimes. And sometimes you can gain a lot of simplicity or speed by unrolling your code and making it simpler um, and just having a bit more of it. Um, it's, al it's always a trade-off and sometimes you need to trade the other direction. And when we turn this, I, I kind of have it in my head, but when we turn this into four different routines, they're going to get quite a bit simpler than this one right here as far as individual routines. So let's call this one F copy WW1. We'll have four of them. Um, or actually, I'm going to call this, well, I'll call it A. I don't. I don't want to get confused because if you look at this right here, we have, actually, you know what, let's change the order of these just to keep this simpler. Let's put this one on the end. We're just adding all these up so it doesn't matter what order they're in. There, wait a second. No, 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 I don't want to do that. I want to keep them in this order because this is the order that they are in memory. It doesn't actually matter programming-wise, but I think it'll just be clearer if we keep them in this order. So A, this one will be A, this one will be B, this one will be C, and this one will be D. Um, and that'll, if I call them 1, 2, 3, 4, it's going to get confusing with F4 and F3 here. So let's, let's, uh, let's keep it simple. So A, B, C, and D in that order. So let's just do A and then we'll be able to do B and so on, very simple. So F copy WWA is going to copy from, let's see, let's get these values and copy them over here. I just want the comments here, I don't care about the other stuff. Um, I just want these addresses. So copy four bytes from F8 comma X in the message schedule to zero page where we can work on it. Now we don't need is we don't need a pointer to the source address. We do still need the destination address. We don't need to pass the WW index because we'll just get WW index. Um, and so that should be what we need. So now let's see. All right, actually, let's pass the destination address in A. Yeah, all right. So the first thing we need to do is load X from WW index because that's going to be our index. If we come back over here, um, WW index is going to be basically our, our T here, except we're talking bytes, not they're talking words with T, we're talking bytes, and so WW index is going to be our index into this 256 byte thing as we move through it. Um, and so it's going to be 64, which is 40 here in hex, it's going to be 64 when, um, when we get to this point. I believe. Yeah, because I store it right there and we haven't changed it since. So, um, okay. 
So we want to load x with that index, and then that's going to be our index into the space right here. We're going to store a into here, probably plus 3. We'll come back to that in a second. We want to load y with 4 because that's going to be our, that's going to be our count. We don't need a separate count variable anymore. Um, then here we're going to load a from, now we can just simplify this. We don't need any indirection. We can just load a from bf8 comma x and store it into 0 comma x, which is going to, the 0 is going to be replaced right here when we store a into here plus 3. And then we increment y, uh, let's see, or no, we have to change that, I'm going to decrement y, but first we'll increment x so that x is going up through our, you know, is, is indexing along for where we're reading from and writing to, and then decrement y is our loop variable, so, and then branch back to there, okay, I think that should be what we want. Um, so that made this routine considerably simpler. It also made it faster. Besides, besides taking out a few instructions, it also made one of the instructions faster because it's not indirect anymore. And now it's also going to be faster to use it because we don't have to set up this address every time. Pulling this out of a, we don't have to pull this out of a um, pointer and add x to it manually. We can just let the processor index here for us. All right, so to use that then, um, come back to where we were here, I'll pop that in there just to keep an eye on it. Uh, let's see what we're doing over here. Um, okay, this needs to be A. Otherwise, I think that one's good. Let's see. Let's get this out of here. This code is actually irrelevant, but let's just get it out of the way so it's not confusing. All right, we'll come back and do B, C, and D after we get make sure that this is right, make sure this works. So what that means is right here, then, we don't need to do any of this. We just want to jump to F4 and let F4 take care of getting the information from where it needs because F4 is always going to need to get from the same place indexed by www index. So how can we do that? So instead of copying from copy source we want to say, let's see, acts on the value, yeah that's fine, acts on the value at um, Racks on the value gotten by um, f copy wwa. Okay. So we're going to let f4, instead of copying the value and then calling f4, we're going to let f4 copy the value because now that it has this routine to do it with, um, it can do that much simpler than us doing it first and then calling f4 and having it copy it from somewhere else. Um, okay, so what that means is then we're not calling fcopyMZ anymore, we're calling WWA, and the only, okay, yeah, we want to put, we don't need to pass the number of bytes anymore, so we're going to copy with fcopy WWA to temp1. And so all we need to do is put temp1 in A, because over here, like I said, that's our, that's our specification. Destination address of zero page is in A. So we'll put temp1 in A. These, these routines, because these are specialized routines, they're just going to copy four bytes. We don't need to make them flexible. We're, we're only going to be ever copying four bytes, and that's fine. Um, and then do the ro re rotate. And I think my rotates, I, I said the other day that I thought one of my rotates might have been wrong, but I think it was actually right here. I just had the wrong, th I hadn't changed the comment. I think it was the deal. I'm, I think it's okay. We'll find out eventually when uh, we test all this. 
So now here again we've got a copy with WWA to temp2. And once again we need to say we need to put temp2 in A so it knows where to put it. So you see this is getting a little shorter now too because we've simplified the, the copying routine. Um, one more, well, let's see, copy VE, why would I be copying VE? That's got to just be a mistake, something I didn't change after I copied this stuff over from another routine. Um, yeah. Copy with F, copy WWA. Again, put A in temp2. All right. So we copy through. We copy three times. We let the F copy WWA routine handle the business of where am I getting this from, based on the value that's already set up in WW index, and it knows I've got to go to zero BF eight indexed by X. All right. So. If that means F4 is ready, is working, then <clears throat> we go up here where we called F4. So then we don't need to do any of this. We just need to call F4. Because we've already Let's see, we already have WW index pointing to the right place, and so we just want to do F4. Just test that. Okay, I believe that is what we want to do. So, I'm in Emacs currently. I said in my last video where I described how I do all this, um, I said I would try to explain a little more as I go along. So I'm going to flip over to the other window where I have my terminals um, and assemble it by typing ACME SHA 256.8.a that assembles it and then I switch to another window where I will do RL wrap telnet localhost 6510 and this connects to the um, this connects to the monitor the remote monitor of the vice emulator and so then I'm in the monitor um, and I can load the file directly in this is something that I didn't know early on I was going to a lot of extra trouble but I can load the file that I just assembled. It's it's a Commodore ready file and rather than having to put it on a virtual Commodore disk and load the disk and all that business, you can just load it right here in the monitor. Now, but first I got to be in the right directory. Okay. All right. And that puts that's put in the code at 1300. Now we have our message set up um, to where our message block starts at 2000. So um, 2000 is just stuff, so we want to put it, or just zeros basically. Um, we're going to be pulling, let's see, so we're going to copy 64 bytes from here to C100, from 2000 to C100. That worked last time, we haven't changed that, so, so that should still be fine. Then we do F4 on whatever is the sort of like the next to last word of that because your your pointer then your WW index is going to be at 64 you're going to want to go eight bytes back from that to 56 and that's where you're going to get the the four bytes to do F4 on um, so let's let's do um, Let's just put some stuff in here. Um, what happened there? I ran out of. I forgot nine. I couldn't. I forgot to count. Um, let's do it that way. All right. So then, oops. Let's do that for. 
basically each of these lines for a bit. You get 16 bytes per line here, and so the first four lines will give us the first 64 bytes, so that's all we really need. Um, <clears throat> and that means that, let's see, let's pop over here to the monitor for a second to where I can, hopefully you can see that, I'll make it a little bigger. Is it cutting that off? It is. It didn't look like it was going to, but it's cutting it off. Um, hang on a second, I need to fix that. That's not what I want. I had this all set up nicely for the 80 column screen and then today I said, yeah, the 40 column screen for what I'm doing right now blends in or gives a better contrast until I get to where I'm actually using the 80 column screen. There's no point in, in uh, restricting to it. Okay, I think now you can see what I'm doing. Let's shrink it just a touch. All right. So here, if we look at 2000, the nice thing is now I can, in, inside the Commodore, everything's a screen editor, so I can just move up and down and do things. Um, so here's our first 64 bytes, and that means F4 we want to run on these four bytes right here. And so I'm going to change them to something smaller. I'm going to change them to one, two, three, four. Okay. Now, something else I did in the between times um, was I wrote a little Perl program, which is right here. And it, it'll be in the repository, but basically, I went to Rosetta Code where somebody had done a full SHA 256 um, program in Perl, and I grabbed a chunk out of it that does the that does the functions, just just strictly the functions, so that I can use it as a test. Um, and so I can run that and give it a value like 01020304 and it'll just say, here's what the functions would kick out for that. So now we know what to look for. Last time I wasn't sure and I tried to just do it manually and all that bit shifting and stuff manually, it was, it's easy to make a little mistake somewhere. So. If this works, it should kick out 41E2C021. That should be our output. Or that, that should be what ends up in the place where it's supposed to end up. Okay, so let's come back here. One, two, three, four. All right. If I'm if I'm got everything, if I got everything straight in my head, that's what should happen. So let's run it. All right. So let's look at C100. Looks like it copied everything correctly. Now, back to the editor here so I can check my thing. So the result of F4 should have ended up at 6C. So back to the monitor. 6C to 6F. What do we have there? Nothing. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So, obviously, I did not do something right. Um, <clears throat> so it did this. It copied the, copied the bytes, but then it ran into trouble somewhere in F4. So we still have a problem in F4. Um, surprised right here it should have got down here and copied whatever was in temp 1 at the end it should have copied that to f4 res 
So I'm surprised it ended up with zeros. Um, let's see here. Init, yeah, init sets up the bank. It's something I always have to check and make sure I set up the bank right. Um, okay, well, something I need to or make something I do need to make myself a note for for next time. Uh, where is my next time list? Um, symbols. You can have the assembler save a symbol file, which you can then load into the monitor, and basically that'll you can have your labels and stuff available in the monitor to set breakpoints and stuff. I think that's basically the extent of my knowledge about it at this point. But I know that sort of thing should be possible typically with a with a debugger, and that's basically what it is. Um, so what we need to do then is since I don't know how to do that yet. Uh, okay, so what we're doing is we call in it. Okay, yeah, and then we do this stuff, and then we call. Just make sure I actually call the things I think I call. We call prep www, which is down here. I'm going to move this up past a knit just to get it closer to the top so it's easier to find where it is. Okay. So that should put prep WW right after, right around 155E, 1560, because that's where we broke out at right here before. Um, and so when prep tubby w runs, we then okay, then we just we're looking for F4. Jump to subroutine F4. So let's assemble that. I'm kind of kind of rambling here, sorry. Um, so I'm assembling over to the monitor. Gotta load the file again. Load the new copy of it. Okay. Alright, now we need to figure out where that is. Alright, so Here's our break. Here's our jump. Here's a jump subroutine followed by another jump subroutine followed by a break. So if we look back at the code, that is right here. Jump to F add and then jump to prep WW and then break. So that means prep WW, if I go back to the monitor, prep WW is the second one here. It's at 13.2e. So it starts right here because I just moved it up. So let's continue. So it comes on down here, da, 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 and it has two jump subroutines right before it returns. So back to the code then. Prep WW has the jump to F, F copy MM and then the jump to F4. And so the second one is the jump to F4. So back to the monitor. That means F4 is at 1422. Okay, so there's our F4 routine. So we can put a break at 14.22 and run it. And then it breaks right there at 14.22 and we can start walking through it. Um, so right as of now, we have, there's our source at 2000. Just, I have a feeling that I'm not counting something right. I know that's what it's going to be. I'm going to be, I'm, but I can't quite, I can't quite place it. Um, okay. Anyway, so 2000. Let me let me think about this. The code here. Okay. So we load A with message P. Store that into copy source. High load, high byte and low byte. So what is message P? Message P is 76. Really? Is that. I guess I set that up earlier. I don't know if that's actually necessary. But yes, I put, tw I put 2000 in there. It might be possible to get rid of that pointer now, too, now that I 
now that I'm hard coding these values, but we'll we'll come back to that if we need to, um, if that's if that's an option later on. Um, <clears throat> so put that in copy source, in copy destination, load x, da, da, da. jump to copy f, f copy mm, and so that's what copied the 64 bytes. Okay, that seems correct. So, WW index then is at 78. So let's check the monitor here. It is 40, which is 64, which means right now it's pointing right here. If I if I index 2000 on FF, it's pointing right there. Of course, it's not. We're not actually working on that. We're working on C hundred. Is that what I'm? Is that what I'm getting wrong? No. No. Okay. Well, anyway, we're walking through the code. Um, let's come back to what. It, let's look at it here. We've got F four right here loads A with the address of temp1 and then it's going to jump to this copy and so then that should put the value out there at let's see since WW index is currently 64 that stores that store A which is temp1 store that into here plus oh 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 I think I found it before this was a zero page thing this was something like I, I, well, I don't want to break it but before this was some, this line here was something like um, you know I, like uh, like this but it this was a single byte so this was a two byte actually this was a two byte instruction Whereas this is a three byte instruction because this address here takes three bytes. This one here, copy source, is a zero page address. This is a you know a regular address and so it takes more bytes. So what that means is to store A right here in place of these zeros, I've got to do here plus four because here plus zero is load A. Then, then here plus one would be the F8 right here. Here plus two would be the zero B. Here plus three would be the store A, and here plus four is right here. Okay. Phew, that was a tricky. That, you know, self-modifying code is tricky because um, if you change anything in between, that you know those kinds of things are going to have to move. Now I could have I could have another label here like call this one change and then you know have it change change plus one and then that wouldn't have been a problem but then you know then you get you get your code more cluttered up with stuff so there again it's another one of those trade offs. Um. Okay, so let's go back and assemble again. Um, let's make sure I've saved both files. Okay, back to the back to the terminal assemble to the monitor I wish I'd have called this something simpler to type in it you know, typing sixes is, is hard work it's extra trouble um, okay go to 1300 all right so that should copy from 2000 to C100 so that it did that correctly so now we're going to step through and well this is going to be kind of a slow process but I guess let's do it anyway um, now I loaded X with 7 8 why would it be 7 8 or no that's from that's from address 7 8 so X is now 40 which is what we want 40 in hexadecimal 64 in binary um, load Y with 4 set it up as our counter so what we've got going on I wonder if I can yeah, let's see. Let's. It might be a little easier to tell what I'm doing here if I put both 
things on one screen for a second. Let's do that. Alright, so we got the code on the left, we got the monitor on the right. And right now we're actually in F copy WWA and we're walking through. course shrink in the window kind of screwed everything screwed up the text layout here but we're still so we just got to the line we got to the line dot here when we're out here at load a from bf8 comma x x is currently our index of 64 y is our loop variable and so we can just keep walking store a into the zero page location for temp indexed by x Oh, there's a problem. There's a problem. That index needs to go from 0 to 3, not from 64 to 67. So, what we're going to have to do is. Da, 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 da. Um, okay, we're going to have to change a, change a thing. This store A here has to use X because X, you can only index store A on X in zero page. You can't store A zero page comma Y. That's not, that's not available. You can store X zero page comma Y for whatever reason. Something to do with the way the, the electronics all line up, but, um, you can't do a comma y here so that one has to be x which means we're going to need to use y here which means we're going to need to load y with this index okay and then x we'll have to load x with zero okay we will increment y and increment x and then compare x to 4. Okay, now let's think about what that's going to do. We've set, we've set up the index and the destination, so that's all good. Except we now we have the index in y. So y is going to be our one that starts at 64 in this case and goes up to 67. You know, this this first test. And so that's going to be indexed on y, B, bf8, comma y. And then we're going to store that in the the here here plus four is going to get turned into whatever whatever it was three eight whatever temp one this this becomes the temp one location indexed on x which starts out at zero. Okay. Then we increment y because that's our index here so that'll go up from like sixty four to sixty five the first time through. Increment x so that'll go up to one and then compare x to 4. The reason a lot of times I do a decrement because that way you don't have to do this compare step but sometimes you can really twist yourself in a notch trying to avoid a simple compare and I don't think that's worth it here. Um, we'll just, we'll just, we'll, we'll let x go up and that way x can can index along with y everything is lined up and nice and, um, and then we just do have this compare here to 4. All right. So now I don't have to switch windows. I can just toggle back and forth here. So assemble. I'll still have to switch within the terminal between the assembler and the monitor, but that's okay. Um, and go. All right. So we break. We're breaking at F4 again, and then jumping into. Here, our F copy WWA here. Then load Y from WW index, which is going to give Y 40. Um, store A into 15.5C, which means it's, it's setting up the destination of temp 1. Then we load X with 0 to be our, our index into temp 1 in 0 page. Load A from the um, load A from the message schedule block indexed on Y. Store that 
into temp1 index on x, which is 0, so that all looks fine. Increment y, increment x, compare x to 4, and then it's going to loop around because x isn't 4 yet. So let's see what we've got. There's our c100, and it's, you know, it's what we expect. And let's see our... Okay, and there's our temp1. So far, we've copied the first byte into it. We expect it to get 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4. So let's continue walking through. All right, there's, uh, that was, did I, I think I already did. Yeah, I've already done two more loops. So let's do the, the fourth loop. Now this time it'll branch if not equal, so it won't branch because it is equal to four, and so then it, it'll then it'll return. So now let's check our temp one location, and there it is. So one o two o three o four. Okay. So we've debugged f copy wwa. It appears to work. Um, now the question is, did it? or did it just break again? I'm not sure. Um, so where was F4 res is 6C. So let's check at 6C. Okay, that still isn't getting done. I don't know if it actually got to that point yet, but at least F copy WWA works. So let's come back to that. All right, let's, um, I think, yeah, okay, I just needed, there we go. I just needed to hit an X and let it go ahead and complete. I forgot what the command for that was. Um, all right, so now let's check. They, does that look familiar? 41 E2 C021. There it is. 41 E2 C021. So F4 works. F4 works. So that is nice to hear. Or nice to see. Um, I'm going to pop this back to the other window because I'm, I'm feeling claustrophobic with both those. Just the way this one gets crammed into a, into a narrower window. All right, so now that we know F copy, actually we know F4 works now, but we also know F copy WWA works. So we can then turn it into four routines. Oops, that was one too many. All right, so uh, how many did I make? All right, so the first one was BF8. The second one will be BC8. So let's just change these comments first, and then BC4 and BC0. C4, and BC0. All right. Um, see who is? How many? Yeah, I did copy an extra one. Two extra ones. All right. So the first one was A. Get rid of these now. First one was A and it works, so now the next one's gonna be B. And all we need to change then is this right here. Just change that to the in, the to the starting point for that particular window as we sh as we slide through the message schedule. And then the next, same thing with the next one. gets to be BC4. And like I said, when you're doing something like this and you see so much duplicated code, your, your instinct is to say there's got to be some way to turn these four routines into a single flexible routine. But that's not always a good idea. And, you know, it may be possible to do that here, but you would definitely have to make the addressing of it more complex, and I just don't think you would gain anything. So this is what we're going to go with anyway. Um, 
So now we have four routines. Each one copies from that particular, from its particular, you know, window into the message schedule as we're sliding through. Um, if we look back here at our at our thing, right here, you know, we have these these four values. This one that we just figured out how to do, and then this one just gets copied. That'll be B. This one gets F3 run on it. That'll be C, and this one get just gets copied. So <clears throat> I think the next thing to do is tackle C or tackle F3. We've got to change F3 the same or similar to the way we just changed F4, um, <clears throat> so that it uses WWC F copy WWC rather than doing its own copying thing. So axon value gotten with f copy wwc change my change my comments first and then go back we just need to load um, load the destination into A, we can get rid of the number of bytes, WWC, uh, load the destination to A, get rid of the number of bytes, WWC, and destination A, get rid of the number of bytes, WWC. So that should fix that. So let us try that. It should be easy to try that without doing any any extra things. Let's get this out of the way. So let's just call F3. So now this time, calling F3 is going to use WWC to get the data, which means it's going to copy from BC4 to um, well, BC4 indexed by X to temp1 and do the thing on it. Um, so where is BC4 comma X going to point when X is 64? Well, if we switch back to the monitor, just to let it do our, our thinking for us, um, BC4 is... Uh, 30, okay, 3,012. Um, I shouldn't have to, I shouldn't have to think that hard to make this work. Um, uh, 3,012, and then we want to add 64 to that, so 76. So C04, yeah, that makes sense, because it's the, the, Basically, the words it works with are the next to last word of the pre. If you look at the previous 16 words, it works with the next to last one, and then the third one, the second one, and the first one. So this would be the second one, and so C04 is where it's going to get the stuff from. Um, okay, let's save everything. Let's go to the here and assemble. Let's go back to the monitor. All right. Let's get rid of this break. We don't need to break unless we're actually checking something. Um, all right. Let's see what we got here at 2000. So what gets copied, since all this gets copied to C100, this would be the second word. This would be the word we expect to F3 to get run on. Four, five, six, seven. So if we use our little pro Perl program again, uh, where, um, okay, four, five, oh, six, oh, seven. We should expect F three to give us four F zero nine six B C D. Okay, so we'll, we'll come back to that after we run it. Um, back to the monitor and go. Now, where is the F3 result? Got to 
check our include here. F3 result is in 6, 8. So, 6, 8 to 6, uh, B, I suppose. 4F, 0, 9, 6, B, C, D. Does that sound correct? I think it does. 4F, 0, 9, 6, B, C, D. Yes, okay, so that's the correct F3 result. And that's kind of funny. They, that, that spells okay. I guess it is okay. Um, no, I have to take a phone call. And I'm back. And that's going to make processing my video a little more complicated, but that's all right. All right, so we have F3 and F4 working. Now if we go back to the process that uses them, then we're going to want to... Let's see, where are we at in the code here? All right, so we were just testing them right here. So once we've copied the 64 bytes, then we want to run index on up until it wraps around to zero. From 64 to 68 to 72, it's going to walk one word at a time up through that. And so let's put a local loop here for now. And then, let's see, what do we want to do? Um, okay, so F3 copies, well, F3 and F4 right now both copy to temp1 and do their thing and then put their results out into F3 res and F4 res, um, which is fine. Um, our add routine, how does our add routine work? F add. Adds two values. We pass the zero page of the first one in X and the zero page of the second one in A. So if we want to add temp1 and temp2 and leave it in temp1, then we pass the zero page of, okay, so that's fine. Um, All right, now, let's see, let's go back and look at F3 and F4 again for a second. These both use temp1 and temp2, which I guess is fine. There's going to be an extra copy here that we could avoid if we changed one of these to use temp2 and temp3. I guess that's worth it. I guess that'd be worth doing. Um, because then... Yeah. Because then we wouldn't even need to copy these to temporary locations, F3 res and F4 res. We could just leave them in the temp locations because if we let's say we leave the result of F4 in temp 1 and we leave the result of F3 in temp 3 just because that'd be easiest that'd be the easiest way to change this then we can go ahead and add temp 3 to, to temp 1 and leave the result in temp 1 and then we just have to add our other two things that we have to get with F copy WWB and F copy WWD and add them to temp one. Okay, so let's do that. Um, let's change this one so that it uses temp three instead of temp one everywhere. And then, yeah, then we don't even have to copy this back off to those other places, and we don't even need those other places. So we don't have to chew up any zero page for F3 res and F4 res. Um, let's change all this stuff here. All right. So then we can just get rid of this. 
because we don't need to copy it anymore. We just leave the result in temp3. And F4 can just leave the result in temp1. Okay. What that means then is once we've done both of those, back up here, once we've done both of those, then we want to add temp3 to temp1, and leave it in temp1. So to do that, we load x with the destination, load a with this, the other one to be added to it, and jump to f add. Okay. Now, going back to our other routines here, now we want to copy, let's just go with the first one. It doesn't matter which one we do first, but let's go ahead and copy B. So we'll call F copy WWB and we'll put our destination as temp2 into A. So load A with temp2, jump to subroutine F copy WWB. So this is a lot simpler because we don't need to run any routines on these. We're just going to copy them there and add them. And then load x with, well then we just need to add again, so let's do that, except this time it's temp2, jump to add, and then we're going to do that business again, let's see, except this time we'll use d, okay, so by the time we get down here then, we should have the four things added together. The four, the four locations, we should have them added together. Um, and my little Perl program isn't going to help us test this, so I'll have to expand on it um, sometime before, before it duplicates all this stuff. But, um, okay, so then that needs to go now we've got temp1 then holding the result of all of this business right here. And that needs to go into C100 indexed by X. Okay, so let's think about that. How does that work? If we're going to copy from a zero page location to a main memory location, Let's go check our routines here. F copy Z to M. The source and zero page would be X, so that'd be temp one. Let's go ahead and start start on that. Temp one. The destination goes in copy dest. And the number of bytes goes in Y. Okay, so now we have another issue because Again, this is moving. We don't know exactly what copy or copy desk is going to change because, again, we're shifting through our message schedule. So we don't want to use that routine. We're going to have to write one more routine to do this um, to go along with our WW routines. And I'll I'll clean up the um, I'll clean up the documentation on this stuff later. But let's copy WWA. Let's call it back. So this will be the one that copies the the result of all that stuff back to, or well, let's just call it E. It's the, the fifth one. We'll call it E. Um, copy four bytes from temp one in zero page to message schedule. Well, it's just going to be C100, um, comma X. Uh, we don't even, really, we don't, if, if, we're, if it's always going to be temp1, we don't need to pass anything to this thing. 
um, very well indexed on WW index. All right, so we don't need to tell it the number of bytes. We don't need to tell it the source. We just need to have the index in WW index, and we're good. So we don't have to do that. We don't have to store a source. We just load A. So this is basically we're going to switch these two lines. We're going to load A from temp1. Wait a second here. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm going to load A from temp1, comma, x. Store it into c100, comma, y, because that's our WW index. Increment the y, increment the x, compare x, and branch. And we got to change the WWE to the E. So copy four bytes from temp1 right here, indexed by x, which is 0, 0 to 3. Store that into C100, indexed by y, which starts out at 64 and will work its way up to 256, wrap around. Um, OK, so I've copied WWE. So all we need to do here, then, is call that. And then now we want to increment WW index four times. We could load it into A and add four to it, but I think it's just faster to increment it four times. And then branch if not equal up to loop. Because we want to go up through all 256 bytes. Once it, as soon as it wraps around to zero, it's starting at 64. So if we increment it by four, it's eventually going to branch around to zero, and that's when we want to break out of this loop, um, and then it'll return. Okay, and that then should completely fill up C00 to CFF with stuff. We won't know what the stuff. Whether the stuff is correct yet, I'll have to write a separate program to test that, probably in Perl, but um, we'll test that out and, and uh, find out uh, what I do. Uh, Alright, so over to assemble. To the monitor. And let's see, what do we got at 2000? Okay, so it's going to take the first 64 bytes here, which is the ones that we filled in, and do a whole bunch of processing on them with F3 and F4 and blah, 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 and adding them all together and what's whatnot. And it's going to move and it's going to put all that then at C100 to CFF. So we should see this fill in with a bunch of random stuff basically. Well, the first 64 bytes will be the copied ones, and then the rest of it should fill in with random stuff. And so that's what we expect to see. All right. Took a little longer that time. We could tell it was doing something. And there's our random stuff. Okay. So, like I said, I'll have to do some, I'll have to write a little test program so that we can say, okay, for this particular input, what should we get here? Because basically, what it's doing is, as it's as it's working its way through, it's using previous values to calculate the next values. You know, it's using four of the previous values to calculate each value as it walks through. And so, if you change one bit somewhere, you're changing all the the subsequent ones. Um, so I'll I'll write a test program for that. But for now, um, I think we're at about an, a little over an hour. So, let's look at where we're at. Um, we've done this. We just need to test it. So really, we should be done with prepare the message schedule as long as, you know, as long as it's okay, as long as it works correctly, we should be done with that. The next thing we're going to need to do is this step, and it, 
init A through H with matching hash values. Now that's actually pretty simple. Um, one thing I did was I got the hash values. So the, you've got these values that are just part of the spec. You don't have to figure them out. They're just provided. They actually come from like fractional parts of the first eight square roots or something like that. It's just a just a way to get some random randomized values. Um, so we've got these eight hashes and then these 64 constants that we're going to want to put in a file. So let's go ahead and do that real quick while we're here. Um, SHA 256 constants, let's call it. And all this really needs to have in it other than some comments. Um, hash value, or let's call them starting hash values and constants for 256. And we'll call this hash values hex. Nice thing about the Acme assembler is you can write you can write it this way where you can just put if if you say hex you can just put hex values and you don't need spaces it'll ignore the spaces it, it, uh, it's it's really nice the way it works so I'm just gonna do that so they don't take up quite so much space and then here we'll have constants and we'll do the same thing. So that SHA 256 constants, um, we'll just pull that in here at the end. So those, so those are those will be in memory after all of our other code, um, and it can get them from there. So what do we need to do then? Maybe we can do one more that one more step here real quick. So here's our step, init A through H with matching hash values. Okay, we'll call this init AH. There's the comment for it. the zone around it unless it turns out I need one. Um, so all this needs to do is copy from hash values from from this location right here to um, let's see let's check the ink file to VA starting at VA. Um, it's four. It's eight four-byte words, and so it's 32 bytes. So we want to copy 32 bytes from hash values to VA. Since hash values are going to be in main memory, VA is in zero page. That means we want to use the routine for that, for copying from main memory to zero page, which is fcopyMZ. Let's copy the docs for that real quick. So we have to put our source address and copy source. That's not a problem because our source address this time isn't going to change. We want to load load A with um, let's see. I can never remember which how this works. This is high byte or low byte, but um, hash values store that into copy source and load A with the other byte of hash values, store that into copy source plus one. Okay. Um, yeah. Hope that's correct. I think I had another place where I was doing that and I determined that I had it right after I switched it once. in this file. 
Uh, was it in this one? No. Was it in... I don't know where it was, I guess. Um, I don't know, you would think that would be low bite, but not necessarily. We'll see what happens. So we want to copy, we put source address and copy source. Destination zero page is going to be um, or load X with VA. Load Y with 32, which is 20 in hexadecimal. And jump to subroutine F copy MZ. Okay. Um, and return. Let's get rid of this. All right. So if I have that right, it's going to copy from hash values, wherever hash values happens to be at that point in the program. Um, and it'll copy it to where it needs to copy to. So let's, after we prep WW, let's do init A through H. Let's assemble. Oh, F copy MZ not defined. How is that possible? Is that not what I called it? F copy MZ. Do I, do I not have an F copy MZ anymore for some reason? Did I delete it? How did I manage that? I must have got rid of it when I was copying all these other things somehow. Hmm, weird. Um. Well, here's what I can do. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm not sure exactly how to do the diffs within within magic. Maybe I can find out. There we go. We just tab into it. Yeah, there I deleted F copy MZ somehow. So there's probably a way to tell magic you want this back. Oh well. So it's only partly there. It must be. Yeah, it got stuck in with this other stuff. Um, well, here. We'll just go get it off the web web page. I'm not really a Git expert when it comes to some stuff like that. I'm like, well. I know you can roll back a file, but I don't want to roll back the whole file. I just want that piece that was in there before. Um, and I know probably the way to do it is to make a branch, roll back within the branch, get the file, blah, blah, blah. But um, let's see, where are we here? This will be quicker in this case since I'm not that certain how to do all that. Uh, we're looking for this file. Do a bit lib. F copy MZ right here. Yeesh. <laughs> That's nasty. Your lab doesn't put, uh, well, you copy off of copy from a, um, cut that crap out. Copy from a web page, bad things happen. It's alright. It won't take long to fix it. Okay, there's our zone. There's our label. Copy MZ back. All 
All right, now we can try assembling again. All right, good that time. Back to the monitor. Okay, so this time what we what we expect to happen is to have the values which are in which are at hash values, which will be near the end of the program, or well, not real near because the constants come after them, but um, will be down towards the end of the program. Um, are supposed to get copied up to 18 in the zero page because that's where VA is. Yeah, 18. From 18 to 37 in zero page will be where we expect it to get copied to. So, let's go back to the monitor. Alright, so just looking at this code. Here's our break, so the last thing we do before the break is last thing we do before the break is call this init this init AH routine. And so that's where we load hash values into copy source. So let's see if it looks like that worked correctly. That's at 137D. So we're loading 74 is the low byte, 16 is the high byte. Yeah, that's correct. It's going to be a 1674, not 7416. That makes sense. All right, so we're expecting it to copy what's at 1674, which is here. We're expecting it to copy that stuff, 6A, 09, so on. Those are our hash values. Um, if we look at our look at them in the org, org file here. There they are, 6A, 09, E667. Yeah, there they are. That's supposed to get copied. The, the first, yeah, the, the first um, 32 bytes there, the first two lines are supposed to get copied to 18 to 37 in zero page. So let's see if that happens. It did. That worked perfectly, it looks like. All right. So, coming back here then, let's put, let's put thingies that we can mark done around. So those things are done. Now next we've got to do this loop. We've got to do this add, which is very simple. Um, so this right here, it's going to be slightly complicated, but not, not as complicated as the last thing. This business here, because of the sliding minus 2, minus 7 stuff, was the most complicated thing. The rest of this is all going to be more straightforward. So we've got to do this loop. We've got to do this. And then at that point, we really have most of the algorithm done. Then we have to work on, OK, how do we get the message in from a file? and get it padded. That's going to be an interesting thing to figure out is how do we, you know, how do we know how long to pad it out to and so on. But I think we're on the downhill side of it now, having got this, this right here done. Um, I think that was the toughest part. So we'll be back to continue next time and I hope this was interesting. Thank you for watching.